below an 89 year old great grandmother was bamboozled at Camping World big time and Camping World ended up having to uh, to settle let's say. The Burge Law Office specializes in RV lemon law nationwide. The following is not legal advice. For additional information, see rvlemonlaw.com. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to another video. Today, I want to help you prepare. Prepare for dealing with sleazy RV dealers and give you some information that, well, you may find helpful when you negotiate your deal on buying a new RV. The problem with sleazy RV dealers is they look just like honest RV dealers. In fact, they look so honest, that's how they're able to survive, is they con people. I don't want you getting conned. An example of somebody that was conned, and she passed away shortly after the con happened, but thank God her family benefited, was, uh, I did a video on this, a link to it is down below, an 89-year-old great-grandmother was bamboozled at Camping World big time, and Camping World ended up having to, uh, to settle, let's say. I don't know what the details were, but I do know that the family was made whole. It was an awful situation, but you know what? Betrayal and being taken advantage of doesn't just happen to 89-year-old great-grannies. It happens to people like you and me. My friend Ron Burge is here and he's going to talk to us about some of the things that we need to keep in mind when we're talking with RV dealers about making a purchase. Here's a part of that interview right now. It happens more often, however, not with people who don't have all of their mental faculties, but with ordinary people who go buy an RV that turns out to be bad. I remember the particular case you're talking about, and that was a sweet lady out in Oklahoma and she basically got conned into a sale without knowing what was going on and she really didn't have the mental faculties to deal with the situation. She wasn't as alert as most people are. Uh, that kind of a problem can be difficult to get out of, uh, frankly. Uh, but what most of the older people are that we see are just the everyday folks who have worked all their lives, saved up their money to buy an RV so they can then travel around the country and see the kids and the grandkids and such. And then the RV starts falling apart around them. And so give me an example. I mean, I, I, I looked just the other day and the RVIA says that the they're, they're shipping probably going to be almost another 600,000 yeah. units this year. And yeah. I'm thinking, okay, we have part shortages and we have uh, problems getting people to work. How are the manufacturers, generally speaking, they're not all like this, but how are manufacturers able to get that many units out without having some issues? I mean, quality control issues. Uh, I don't think that they can, frankly. When you work those kinds of numbers, things aren't going to happen as good as they can when you take your time. In fact, I remember uh, one of the presidents of the big three, one of the big three companies, uh, he was quoted, and this is, uh, I think it was in RV, one of the RV business magazines, and he was quoted before the pandemic uh, as having said that sales were slowing down and that was going to give them a chance to now turn their focus on quality. Hmm. Well, when sales are up, that means they're not focusing on quality. I mean, it, it's really that simple. Uh, if they take their time and build it right, you don't get the problems that you get when they don't take their time because they got to get them out the door and get them delivered. Okay, you've been in the business for, for decades, in the, yep. and you specialize in RV lemon law. Since COVID and this big rush, everybody wants to buy a new RV. As you look at the situation through you know your eyes, what do you see is going to come at us in the future in terms of quality issues, lemons, uh, manufacturers going to end up getting a lot of unhappy people? What do you see? And what do you kind of predict, if you will? You're probably not big on predictions, but what, what does your gut tell you? My gut tells me that you're going to see as many problems, if not more, than has ever existed in RVs and in the industry. You know, it, it, if you reflect back on 08 and 09, 2008, 2009, and in that time frame when the recession hit, manufacturers mm -hmm. learned how to get cheap in the building process and still sell them at about the same price. So the result is they came out of that recession learning how to build them cheaper and keep the profits up. Then you go into the next cycle, then you get into the pandemic and everything. Essentially what's happened is that they've learned that they can make a lot of money by not building quality and instead take care of the problem on the other end, 
In other words, when the owner comes back and complains enough to get somebody's attention. I don't see that business model changing a whole lot. Uh, the, the RV industry is pretty much where the auto industry was back in the 1930s, 1940s. Uh, the quality is not really there yet. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be there for a long time, simply because that's not the business model that makes money in this business. Yeah, but the, the good RV dealers, they want to they want to sell a good product. They want to take care of yeah. their people. Uh, and and I I know some dealers who have literally said, we can't sell any more of your products. They've got too many problems as they arrive at our dealership. We can't fix them all. And oh, but yeah. that's what a that's what a good dealer does, I think, is they're they're honest. They go, you're making junk. Get it out of here. Yep. And I've heard those same stories, and I could give you a couple of brand names and a couple of dealers that I know from our own experience that they refused to keep the contract selling uh, that particular brand simply because they arrived with way too many problems. Uh, and that's unfortunately something that happens in the business. The manufacturers still don't care enough about the way they built in order to build the quality in and keep the problems out. Yeah. I, I, I don't I, think that's going to go away, Alan. I, I don't either. I Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to go away. And RVs are made by, by these, human hands. And automobiles are made by machines for the most part. And human hands make a lot more mistakes than machines do. Human hands, you know, we call in sick, we get in a bad mood, we get distracted by a text message, whatever, and we make mistakes, and it happens. And I just think it's going to, as long as human now, beings when, are touching those things, it's going to happen. Those, when you hurry those hands up, you're not going to have fewer mistakes. Right, right. You don't get less mistakes when you hurry and rush. You know, I think it's a reasonable assumption that the faster we have to do anything, the lower the quality gets. Go, 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 go. The faster you cut your grass. Remember the movie or the, the, uh, the old TV show and the skit? You probably do if you're old like me. Lucy and the Chocolate Factory. In the beginning, the conveyor belt's just doing this. But it doesn't take long and all of a sudden you can't keep up. That's what can happen at an RV manufacturing plant. When manufacturers pay on the piece, regardless of the quality, what do you think happens to the quality of the finished product? That's all the more reason to be careful when you buy a new RV. Be careful when you buy a used RV. Buy a brand that is known for quality. They're all going to fall apart if you don't take care of them, but some RVs are clearly made better than others, clearly. But it's up to you to decide which brand that is best for you. You have to do your own homework. If you go on YouTube and you listen to some sales pitch, you are likely making a big mistake. Your needs, the RV that is best for you is not the same as your neighbor, not the same as the dealer wants you to believe it is necessarily. So do your own homework. Go to campgrounds. Talk to people who have an RV that's just like the one you're thinking about buying. Ask about the manufacturer. Have you had any issues? How hard was it to get warranty work done on your RV? Ask about the dealer at the same time. They may tell you the RV's great, but the dealer sucks. They may tell you the dealer's great, but the RV sucks. But do your own homework and be responsible for your decisions. That's the best advice I can give you. I will tell you that if you think you happen to have a lemon RV, you probably don't. There's not a lot of lemon RVs out there. There really aren't. But if you think that, you know what, I have a lemon. Well, the way to make sure, I want you to go to rvlemonlaw.com. It's a website. It's down below. Yeah, it's Ron Burgess. It's not an advertisement. He doesn't care. He, he, he's not trying to get your money. He's trying to provide information. If you click on the link below, rvlemonlaw.com, You'll find out all different kinds of things about RVs and what makes a lemon and how many taking the RV back to the dealership. You'll find out all kinds of information that will be helpful before you go hire some lawyer, write a check to them. Don't do that. Go to rvlemonlaw.com first to find out if you actually probably have a lemon RV. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. If you liked it, you know what to do. Give it an old thumbs up. Thank you again for watching. I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. Be safe, have fun, play nice, and ba -dum -bum -bum. don't leave your good manners at home. I'll see you next time.